doing a proper stealth run or what I call basically instead of the enemy stalking you're going to be stalking the enemy uh, showing how to do properly going to, to be um, lone wanderer style so um, I'm gonna show the gear that you're gonna want to wear and the weapon choices you're gonna want to make um, and accessories that are gonna make the difference um, so without going too much into the talking part I'm gonna show you my character setup um, first and foremost uh, let me switch to what um, I started out with uh, so if you look at what my character is wearing um, I have on a beanie which actually doesn't add to anything I have the wraparound goggles to you know to simulate uh, infiltration tactics um, the gear that I'm wearing is of importance because if you're going to do stealth runs, if you're going to, you know, do Lawn Wanderer um, exploration, you definitely want to have the gear that's going to complement your play style. Um, and the gear that I have on uh, is the vault suit, which has um, radiation shielding. Um, and the other uh chameleon armor as well as uh to aid in my ability to um sneak uh with relative ease and unimpedance by um enemies so the better my sneaking ability the better i can either do a stealth kill um or sneak past the enemy or not even engage the enemy at all um, true predator mode is really just about understanding uh, your foe knowing what their habits are knowing what they're doing and whether or not they're either harming your ability to proceed or affecting your mission so uh, you want to react to the enemy um, in a way that not only allows you to complete your mission but um, also allows you to have an easy run without a companion with you so uh, without saying too much more um, back to the gear so I'm wearing chameleon chest armor, um, which if you look at um, what I'm doing now, I'm basically invisible. And uh, all I did was just crouch into the sneak position, uh, which makes my character transparent. Um, and that's what the armor does. It basically makes your character transparent. Um, and it saves you the trouble of having to lug around a bunch of uh, stealth boys, which can you know weigh you down um so that definitely makes a difference you want to be as light as possible um the weapons that you carry um grenades mines you know stuff like that that's the stuff you want to worry about carrying you don't want to worry about carrying um you know uh heavy weapons uh things like that uh you definitely want to have a long range weapon you want to have a weapon um that has uh, close range uh, stopping power um, the whole idea is to be stealthy uh, get past the enemy as best as possible without the least amount of conflict so um, you can see here that uh, I'm completely invisible or transparent um, and the armor that's allowing me to do that um, is legendary armor which I can show you guys um, you can see where the stars are uh, what pieces are legendary um, the chest piece is chameleon armor um, and uh, in the description you can see it says enemies have a harder time detecting you while you're not sneaking and not moving uh, while you're sneaking and not moving um, that's important for doing the stealth runs um, especially if you're doing lone wanderer uh, exploring 
um, and it's not for everybody. Everybody is not a, able to do the Lone Wanderer um, exploring because, you know, having that companion there means that they can take the, the majority of the damage from you or for you. Um, but for some people, a lot of people, you know, that's a hindrance because if you want to sneak either past an enemy up to an enemy, um, a lot of times your companion gets in the way of that um, and they cause you to be noticed by the enemy. So you want to prevent that. Um, you know, you don't want that to be an issue for you. Um, but you could see um, with the gray cap, you could see that it adds uh, one point of luck, um, which is definitely good because uh, it, it, it adds to your AP assistance. Um, and uh, the green bandana is just basically for aesthetic purposes. Um, I have the uh, shadowed combat armor. Um, which adds slightly to your sneaking ability. Um, the vault suit uh, offers uh, 25 radiation resistance and 20 damage resistance. Um, but I won't be using the um, vault suit, although it has a pretty decent um, shield or radiation protection um, for just a simple vault suit. What we're going to be using is the military fatigues. Um, now, I have two sets of fatigues because I want to show you um, the difference between military fatigues that have been augmented with ballistic weave. Um, you guys may have uh, briefly or uh, occasionally heard the term ballistic weave. Um, and if you don't use military fatigues, which a lot of people don't, um, you really won't know uh, what ballistic weave is, but ballistic weave is basically uh, a type of armor that is designed for um, normal uh, clothing to enhance the protection of normal clothing. Um, but what it does is it enhances it to a much higher level than, say, um, items that would have an already decent uh, protection for example the without the shielding um, basically has a single digit uh, damage resistance if you look at the bottom of my screen um, to the right where you see the helmet you can see my damage resistance is 119 my energy resistance is 124 and my sh my radiation shielding is uh, 40 so if I put this regular uh, military fatigue on um, without any kind of added protection to it uh, you can see that it doesn't change my stats at all now if you go to the second set here you notice a difference in the damage resistance and the energy resistance um, look at these two here and you see an absolute incredible difference um, and I'm gonna show you how that is possible um, so you can see the damage at the bottom of the screen the damage resistance um, is 119 124 for energy and 44 uh, radiation so um, if I put this on um, it changes my damage resistance um, and my energy resistance radiation is not a concern for me because if I have to go to an area that's highly radiated all I got to do is basically wear power armor um, this is just for your lone wanderer stealth runs um, so you can see that my damage resistance and energy resistance has gone up completely um, and uh, it, it's basically because of the ballistic weave that is embedded into the military fatigues um, and a lot of people don't know about the ballistic weave um, and there's only one way to get it um, and I'm going to show that right now um, but I just wanted to show the um, gear that you would want to use to um, 
help you you know do the lone wanderer uh predator mode or stealth missions um so this is what i'm using um you guys can use uh whatever other um items you want to wear but for proper predator mode or stealth mode uh you want to be as uh inconspicuous as possible uh the more um undetectable gear you wear the better um i have the complete set of the chameleon armor but it's really heavy like you can look at the chest piece and see that it's 20 pounds by itself so all of the pieces add more weight uh to your character so you want to eliminate that so the chest piece and the right arm are the only two pieces that i'm going to use um, everything else is just basically uh, shadowed pieces. Um, these are enhanced by myself. Um, and uh, I'll show um, why I chose those pieces and the level of uh, uh, protection that I put on them. Um, so that just gives you guys a brief uh, description of the gear you want to use. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the weapons or actually one thing at a time. So what you do here, um, let's just go to the, let's start with the chameleon armor. Um, first and foremost, uh, this armor was taken off of a, off of a legendary enemy that I killed. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that the enemy that I took this off of was a legendary uh, ghoul reaver. Now, um, this is very important to pay attention to. Uh, this armor is one of the rarest pieces of armor in the game. And the enemy that you get it off of is a legendary enemy, of course. But the thing is, it's a random encounter. And if you don't understand what that means, it basically means that um, you can't find this enemy in a particular location. Um, he could be anywhere in the game and uh, you would have to basically have a high amount of luck in order to um, be able to have the chance to interact with it. Um, and that's pretty much how you get all the pieces. But to get every single piece of the chameleon armor you basically have to fight uh, all legendary enemies uh, because one enemy does not have every single piece Sorry about that. Uh, just had a phone call. So um, back to what I was saying. Um, with the chameleon armor, uh, it's off of a randomly encountered enemy. You cannot find them on a map anywhere. They're not at any specific location. Um, and it could be a legendary enemy. Um, but if you really want to get into doing stealthy missions, I would probably explore uh, quite a bit. Um, and if you have a high luck or any gear that can enhance your, uh, your, your, uh, or increase your luck, um, I wear it, you know, um, it, it it's going to help. But as you're exploring, you'll come across, uh, random enemies. Um, and if they have a red skull, that's even better because that's what these enemies had that I killed. They had red skulls and they were legendary enemies. Um, and these two pieces here came off completely different enemies. Um, so, uh, in addition to that, uh, it was just basic uh, leather chest piece. But you have the ability to improve on that. So, if you go into the armor, um, you can choose um, 
what you want to increase the armor the leather to um, I chose shadowed leather so that it improves my stealth in dark areas and damage resistance um, the stealth part is the most important thing so that's why every piece that you see on my character is either shadowed or uh, chameleon armor well it's shadowed basically um, and then right here I chose lead lined uh, to reduce radiation damage um, uh, because damage resistance and energy resistance um, it's it's okay um, but you don't really want to have to worry about the damage resistance because that's what your military fatigues are going to do for you as you can see I have mines at uh, mark 5 ballistic weave um, so if you go to um, let's just say you're doing this for the first time if you go to the regular military fatigues and you click on it you'll be given the option to choose anything from basic ballistic weave on up to mark 5 ballistic weave um, and you can put this on any item that does not have automatic damage resistance so it could be regular clothing or it could be um, military fatigues I told I chose military fatigues to keep with the whole motif of uh, you know stealth recon um, surveillance you know tactics strategy the whole you know military aspect of it um, so that's why I chose the military fatigues because it has much higher resistances um, than just regular armor or the um, uh, the vault suit so every piece that I have uh, is shadowed um, so that's done on purpose um, the some pieces have muffled um, as you guys can see uh, basically muffled I don't know why it won't let me show that but uh, muffled basically reduces the sound that your armor makes um, when moving past enemies um, I should actually have that on all of my uh, pieces here <laughs> um, but that is the most important part to um, being able to you know move past the enemy re with relative ease um, that, that's the that's basically it with that um, to get the ballistic weave what you'll have to do is join the um, underground railroad um, once you join the underground railroad do a couple of missions for Tinker Tom and um, Pam it automatically becomes unlocked in your armor um, uh, enhancing abilities um, so if you pick military fatigues or um, uh, just just to give you oh, I went back into the same mode um, just to give you an example of what you can use your ballistic weave on um, anything that's not uh, military anything that's not armor um, so if I pick say like this BOS uniform I can enhance that or this baseball uniform any type of clothing that does not automatically have any type of damage resistance um, you can I can put it on this bathrobe um, black vest and slacks um, so anything that doesn't automatically have armor you can add ballistic weave to so the, mil the military fatigues I chose because uh, it just you know it just goes very good with uh, the armor um, and you could see by what I have on let me see it I need to put a light in here um, let's see alright so it won't work there generator there let's see if it'll work here okay so it works here so uh, you can see what my character has on and what the armor looks like 
um, basically have on the ballistic weave in infused uh, military fatigues uh, wrap around goggles uh, the um, beanie on my head um, gives me one extra point of luck and to show you guys uh, my uh, stats you can see here that my luck is increased by one point my agility is increased by two because of my armor um, and obviously my perception because of the goggles um, these are the things that you want to improve because these are the things that you're going to use mostly um, when doing your stealth missions um, so I definitely recommend um, you know going this route in terms of your gear you know if you want to be able to um, do proper stealth runs or predator mode as I like to call it um, and again the the bandana is just basically aesthetics um, I don't really need it uh, but if this is a real world uh, scenario you would definitely want to put it on to prevent uh, you know low levels of radiation from you know inf inf infiltrating your body um, so that's basically what I have going on there with uh, my character too bad the camera doesn't allow me to pan out to show you uh, you know from head to toe but uh, you guys can see it in the stats um, so uh, the next thing you want to do is equip the proper weapons um, I'm gonna actually remove all of these weapons um, let's see now I'll keep that one keep that one uh, get rid of that get rid of that um, uh, you definitely want to keep um, some sort of uh, melee weapon on you uh, that you can use to uh, sneak up to an enemy and uh, use it on them um, I don't recommend any any real heavy weapon that requires you to use both hands um, because they're relatively slow uh, but you could use um, any weapon that um, like a machete you know something like that uh, let's see let me go back here uh, that is a absolute must um, one thing I wanted to do here was show you guys um, you can use any of your legendary weapons um, I definitely want to use the Whistler um, let's see do I want to keep that on me um, no that has too much weight um, let's say you guys want to make your own um, let's see if I have let me make sure I have enough starch because I know I'm gonna need some adhesives okay alright let me go grab some extra corn here um, what I'm doing is basically making um, additional uh, starch um, and well. what the starch does is it allows you to make automatically make uh, adhesives um, adhesives is basically what you use to keep all your armor and weapons together uh, and obviously I don't have enough so we're gonna bypass that and just use what we have uh, let's get rid of this extra stuff here um, you want to be as light as possible obviously your weapons won't really allow you to do that um, but you really only need to have the basics with you um, medics uh, you don't need that if you have a certain perk ability and I'll show you guys that um, if you have this perk here the life giver perk um, it increases your health um, by 20 by plus 20 uh, the first two increases it by plus 20 
so that's 40 additional health the last one gives you an additional 20 which is a total of 60 but the real benefit of this perk is that it slowly regenerates your lost health so it doesn't matter how low your health is it'll slowly regenerate your health um, and that's why I, I said um, uh, with the medics you don't really need that <clears throat> because it, it just basically helps with damage resistance um, and you have a pretty high damage resistance already um, the one perk that really will make a difference uh, for your lone wandering will be your medic perk um, definitely invest into this um, I got one more to go but definitely invest into this because the more you invest into this the the least amount of stim packs you have to use because each time you use a stim pack it basically refills your entire health um, and it removes radiation so um, once you have the ability to remove radiation um, you know you basically uh, don't really need anything else uh, just right away in uh, your stim packs you don't need to carry anything else so um, that's the purpose of picking those individual perks uh, so back here um, so let's just let's take this basic uh, 10 millimeter pistol um, I chose the auto pistol because you in a situation like this you want something that does rapid fire now this weapon here um, I didn't I didn't uh, get it off of an enemy like this um, when I got this weapon it was just a it was basically this uh, with the ability to do 10 points of cryo damage and freeze an enemy on critical hits so this pistol this pistol here the one I call cold shoulder uh, it was basically this one so you can see this doesn't have any modifications on it none at all okay so um, I'm gonna show you with the exception of the legendary ability I'm gonna show you how you can mod this weapon uh, to be very effective as a sidearm um, so you want to be very careful in what you choose and how you're going how you're going to um, interact with the enemy if you have to engage in the enemy what type of enemy is it um, you know if you only use this pistol would it have the stopping power you know like if you use it against a mutant overlord you know just having a decent amount of damage output is really not good enough against an overlord or a warlord um, so you, you really want to be smart in how you um, mod your weapons and by by no means am I trying to indicate that anyone that may watch this video don't know how to mod weapons I'm not saying that at all but there's people who don't really understand the concept of modding so that's what I'm saying this for not to the people that understand how to mod um, but what I'm doing is showing you how to effectively and properly mod a weapon to take on just about any type of enemy um, you have to understand the mods you're going to use um, so let's start with the receiver okay um, and and just understand um, that there are numerous receivers once you've unlocked the gun nut perk um, and you basically can unlock every last one of these receivers you gotta go through each receiver and look at what its description is and what it does um, I'm not gonna you know give a description of each receiver um, I'm just gonna go to the main ones that are going to basically give your weapon the maximum amount of damage so we have an automatic receiver here um, and it says improved rate of fire inferior damage and range so we want to change that but we want to keep it as an auto receiver um, your, your next automatic receiver is an armor piercing receiver but it does not change your damage output so we keep moving on uh, you have the powerful receiver which is you know very tempting to use we don't want to use that one and I know people are probably thinking well why wouldn't you want to use anything other than a 
powerful receiver. Well, remember, we're trying to keep with the auto uh, pistol, um, and that's for good reason. If you take a regular 10 millimeter pistol and put a powerful receiver on it, it fires one bullet at a time. Let's say you're fighting multiple enemies, or you're fighting an enemy, say, like a sting wing or a mutant hound, uh, but you're fighting two. If you tag both enemies and your weapon does it a decent amount of damage, you can reduce the enemy's damage. You can do, reduce both enemies' damage, you know, at the same time. So that's the purpose of staying with the auto pistol. Um, and a powerful receiver is good, but, you know, if you're engaging one enemy, you still have the other en enemy to worry about. So I'm trying to explain to everyone um, what's the best type of weapon to use against multiple enemies. So um, you have the hardened automatic receiver. Now keep this receiver in mind because this is probably one we may use, but we're going to keep going on. You have the rapid automatic still does not increase the damage okay right here you have the hardened piercing auto receiver improved rate of fire and armor penetration reduced damage and range um, and when it says reduce damage um, don't look at it as a bad thing um, it just means that um, it doesn't have the same damage output as say your powerful receivers now you see where we are right now we're at the powerful automatic receiver um, improve damage and rate of fire which is exactly what we want we want to improve the rate of fire if you look at the description to the left um, for each receiver look at the rate of fire okay you have the rapid automatic the rapid automatic uh, receiver which gives you 150 fire rate um, that's pretty good but the damage is not where you want it to be you have the hardened uh, piercing receiver. Now that is an that is exceptional um, fire rate, the 127. So if we go back here to the powerful receiver, this is where you to equip on your weapon. Um, you can see the damage is at 23. Um, that's not really, um, you know, good for your really tough enemies, and this weapon is not really meant to use against you know the legendary enemies but if you have the most ammo for this weapon you definitely want to use this weapon um, you can wither an enemy down it'll take a lot longer than say using um, a submachine gun um, which just has slightly more damage um, but you know you basically want to have a go-to weapon that has a substantial amount of ammo um, and basically can um, you know wither an enemy down so if you have to dodge the enemy if you have to um, you know constantly keep exchanging you know firepower with them you know you want something that's gonna do a decent amount of damage so we're gonna go ahead and go with the powerful automatic receiver okay so now that we have the receiver out of the way um, and we have a decent amount of damage, so let's go with the short barrel. Okay. So your barrel is basically designed to allow you to either increase your range and accuracy or one or the other. Uh, short barrels, you know, don't really help in that aspect. Um, so for me, if I'm using a weapon like this. I definitely want to improve my hip fire accuracy. Um, and basically, what that means is, uh, for those that don't know, um, let's say you fire your weapon without actually using the scope on a weapon or the sights on a weapon. Um, so, if you're charging at an enemy, um, you basically want to have as best of an accuracy as possible. Um, so with the improved accuracy that's okay um, but you want to go for better uh, accuracy um, so you can see here with the long light ported barrel I have improved fi uh, hip fire and recoil recoil is the kickback of the weapon um, so when you're shooting your weapon each time it kicks back it takes a little longer for you to refocus your weapon so 
having a better barrel means that it reduces your recoil and gives you better recoilability. Um, you definitely want to reduce your recoil uh, because you want to stay as uh, sharp and as focused on an enemy as much as possible. So you want to be able to continuously tag an enemy. Um, so we're going to go with the light, long light ported barrel. Um, standard grip, again, not very many choices, but what it does is it adds to your weapon's ability. I'm running out of adhesives here, so I'm, I'm just showing you what it looks like. Um, so you want to go with the better grip, the sharpshooter's grip, because it adds to your hip fire accuracy and it also adds better recoil so the least amount of recoil means the more accurate your weapon can fire at an enemy so each time your weapon kicks back um, it's it's reducing your accuracy so the least amount of accuracy uh, I'm sorry the least amount of recoil means the better accuracy so if you have better recoil then of course you can have better accuracy um, and then uh, your magazine always go with the better magazine uh, you can see here better ammo capacity improved uh, reload speed so you definitely want to go with the larger uh, quick eject mag because you can pop it out and put another one back in and basically continue firing uh, standard sights um, glow sights for this weapon is is the best thing you can use um, all this other extra stuff uh, you you don't need that glow sights are, are good enough um, muzzle um, with a weapon like this because it has the um, rapid fire or not rapid fire but it has the auto ability um, you want to reduce its recoil as much as possible so for this weapon we want to add a compensator now the compensator will reduce your range not by much it's it's a small sacrifice to pay for the greater gain um, so with this one you want to pick the compensator it improves your per shot recoil improved recoil control um, with slight reduction in range um, but the compensator is is perfect because um, it, it reduces your your recoil even more which makes your weapon more manageable um, and it allows you to continuously um, hit an enemy with better accuracy uh, so with the finished product that's what it would look like so to give you an idea um, I don't have the weapon fully set up but to show you how that weapon would look with all the proper pieces on it this is exactly how it will look so I basically took a simple 10 millimeter pistol and modded it to look like this. Um, so you guys can see here, it's a pretty badass looking weapon. Um, but to give you an example of what it can do, um, and aside from the, um, wait a minute, I'm trying to see, did I use, um, see on mines, I used the hardened piercing auto receiver. Um, which gives me 18 damage but if I wanted to uh, improve this I would basically go for the powerful receiver um, which actually also too allows me to do a slight uh, energy damage um, but I'm actually pretty happy with the weapon um, I think I may do it at a later date um, but to show you guys what the finished weapon would uh, feel like I'm gonna fire this weapon uh, so you guys can see you know what the weapon is capable of doing I'm going away for the set from I'm going away from the settlers because uh, they're kinda antsy about uh, weapons being fired in their presence okay so this is the weapon with the glow sights um, and this is what it looks like and sounds like when it fires. It's okay that it doesn't have a silencer on it because if all hell breaks loose you definitely want a weapon that um, you know you could do a lot with um, 
and although it sounds really cool when it fires, um, your your greatest concern is whether or not it can be effective against uh, the enemy. So how you properly set up a weapon is really going to determine how effective it can be against the enemy. So um, with this weapon, uh, let's see, quick eject. You know what? I'm actually going to make the larger magazine. So now that I have a larger magazine um, in this weapon, um, you can see that I went from having 12 clip magazines to now 24. Uh, I will use more ammo, but I can shoot more rounds, which means that it gives me a slight advantage um, over most enemies. Um, so the weapons of choice uh, that you'd want to have, um, this is one of my favorites here. This is an automatic armor piercing um, assault rifle. Um, and you can see the tip has the silencer barrel on it. And I have the drum magazine with the uh, recoil compensating stock. Um, I have the recon scope because I want to be able to target enemies. So to give you an example of this weapon, let's go back over here uh, so you can see the weapons of choice here. Um, so let's say that I'm firing this weapon. Um, it has the range that I need, um, but if I had to do close quarter combat, um, or CQC, if anybody is not familiar with, uh, that term, um, basically if you look through the scope, it's a recon scope. Um, and with this scope, what it does is it targets your enemies and it puts a little um, dot above their head to allow you to track their movements. Um, so if you have to sneak past enemies or you have to infiltrate an area filled with enemies, you want to know how many enemies is in the, the area and you want to know exactly where all of them are located. Um, so that's why this particular scope is put on this weapon again. This is one of those weapons that um, I got off of a legendary enemy. It didn't have any of these um, improvements on it. Everything you see where it says current mod. Um, so I actually put all this stuff on there. So I modded this weapon myself. The only thing I didn't do to the weapon was the additional 50% more damage against humans. Uh, because it's a legendary weapon. Um, usually legendary uh you know all the necessary mods on it so i basically put all these mods on it myself uh the vented barrel the silencer the drum magazine um you you always have to have weapons that you can fall back on and you you definitely want to have weapons that if you have to get into a firefight you want to be able to protect yourself if you have to retreat and there's nothing wrong with retreating it's better to retreat than to just lay there and die you know to die unnecessarily um, because a lot of people don't quick save or save before they go do a mission and when you die you know you basically have to start back over from where you started from and you know that's kind of annoying so um, you know, every single one of my weapons is modded to the specifics that I want for what I need to do. Um, the next one here, um, the silencer, uh, I'm sorry, the um, sniper rifle. Uh, this is basically a simple uh, 308 rifle. Um, uh, and, it, well, for those that don't know, uh, numbers on bullets or guns that specify a number of uh, 0.308 38 uh, 0 .50 45 44 it's the caliber uh, the weapon is designed to shoot a particular size of a of a bullet um, and uh, bullets are known by the caliber of the the projectile um, and the size of the bullet um, 
is really not about uh, destroying. It's more about uh, extreme uh, damage. Um, so with a 50 caliber receiver, um, I'm basically able to shoot um, projectiles or rounds, uh, bullet rounds that has extreme stopping power um, and can do large num large amounts of damage. Um, so with this weapon here, um, because it has long range capability uh, and it also has a, a decent range. If you don't put the silencer on it, it has a range of, I believe, 227 or 231. But with the silencer, it's greatly reduced. Um, you sacrifice that distance, so you have to judge how far you need to be from an enemy to get an effective shot off. Um, so 185 yards is, you know, still pretty decent. Um, it puts a decent amount of distance between you and the enemy. Um, so this is why you really want to know your enemy. You really want to, you know, understand the type of enemy you're going up against. Um, a 50 caliber round uh, can do a lot of damage to almost any enemy with the exception of legendary. So you have to do an insane amount of damage to a legendary because remember they can mutate. Um, and their mutated version is much harder to... Uh, wither down so um long range capability is definitely a must because if you need to kill an enemy enemy from long distance you want to know what type of enemy it is if it's an enemy that you really can't go toe to toe with um try to reduce its dam it, its uh, damage resistance from a distance um so you can see this weapon here um what i have on it 50 caliber receiver long ported barrel again um you know for range and uh recoil ability marksman stock to give you the best possible um you know shot without uh you know uncomfortability or movement of the scope large quick eject magazine to pop in the secondary clip um the scope again is just like the one that you saw on my previous weapon um, just a short version on the assault rifle. It's the short recon scope on the Sniper rifle. It's the long-range scope um, So if you look here um, I can basically see enemies much farther away with the long recon scope. It, it allows you greater magnification um, So when you're out there in a the wasteland and you're you know scouring uh, areas um, you know look around your surroundings when you're in sneak mode uh, you know stop every 15 20 feet you know and use your recon scope you, you need to know what's around you um, sometimes you can walk right into a hornet's nest um, and not even realize it um, and by hornet's nest I mean a shitstorm of enemies such as uh, a swarm of uh, sting wings one sting wing can be a headache, a pain in the ass, literally. Um, but two or three, um, with the possibility of one of them being a legendary sting wing, oh yeah, you got troubles. So, you know, you may see these at a distance. If you do, take them out. <laughs> take them out as quick as possible. Uh, long range weapons are definitely the uh, weapon of choice for you know long range uh, recon um, so that's definitely a weapon of choice um, melee weapons definitely want to carry you a seriously decent melee weapon um, let's see let me make sure I don't have anything on me that I don't need uh, the deliverer Definitely want to keep that. Um, that one. That one. Uh, this one, yes, and that. Okay. So. Um, back to the uh, pistol. Um, I didn't have enough adhesives to go into the full uh, modding of the weapon. 
Um, but with this weapon, definitely go with the sharpshooter's grip. Um, standard magazine, always want to change it to the large quick eject magazine. Um, standard sights, you just need glow sights. Just go with the glow sights. You don't need anything other than that. Uh, in terms of muzzle, uh, go with the compensator. Because um, you definitely want to reduce your recoil. Uh, and you can see here uh, with that piece added, uh, it makes the weapon look really cool. I mean, the weapon looks cool and it sounds cool when it fires. But your primary goal here is to have a, uh, a hip fire weapon um, that can basically, you know, get the job done for you. Um, so um, that's that with that. Uh, let me get rid of that. Because I don't need it. I already have something. Um, and let's pick a melee weapon. Uh, let's see. Berserker's combat knife does more damage to lower your armor resistance. Well, that won't work for me. Uh, does more damage to lower your health. Well, that doesn't work. Um, and that's a walking cane, really? Uh, Exterminator's Knuckles does more damage against Murlurks and Bugs. Um, that could be a possibility, but no. Uh, let's see here. Super Sledge, Furious Glove. Uh, damage after each consecutive hit on the same target. Eh, you know what? That might work. Um, it's only 1.7 pounds, so... Uh, that may be a possibility, uh, but let's continue through here and see what else we have. Increased damage after consecutive hit on the same target. Um, let's see. The fist did 60 damage. This does 28. Uh, lead pipe 22. Let's see what other legendary melee weapons. Uh, this does 22 does double damage if the target is at full health now that would be a good choice because that would double the damage of the base damage so 22 twice 44 um, that's still not better than uh, the uh, boxing glove so let's continue on uh, tire iron does double damage if the target is at full health so uh, we get slightly higher uh takes us to 48 uh still not good enough to me um let's see what is this does 50 points additional radiation damage now that is very interesting uh it does a hundred points or actually 150 um because the base radiation damage is 100 does 50 points additional radiation damage so basically 150 now this would really be good against um you know what i'm gonna take that that would be really good against uh human enemies uh what is this kneecapper nope don't need that kneecapper board nope kneecapper boxing glove no uh lucky combat knife critical shots do double damage and the critical meter fills faster um, only does 18 points of damage. Um, mm, I would have to pass on that one. Um, excuse me one second, guys.
Um, so with this one, uh, I think I'm going to take that one. Um, looking at some other possible melee weapons. Um, powerful pipe wrench. 25% more damage. So we're talking uh, 57 maybe. Um, is two pounds at it. Uh, that's not bad. 57, okay. Puncturing sledgehammer. Um, relentless flamer. Relentless pipe wrench. Refills your action points on a critical hit. Hmm, not bad. Uh, let's see if we can improve any of those weapons. Uh... Yeah, serrated target. Okay, increased damage from sneak attacks. Targets bleed. Exceptional damage. Yes, we want to upgrade that. So I just upgraded a legendary weapon, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see. What about this? Uh, ooh, bladed. I would need three adhesives. Um, I may keep that on me. Uh, so. Um, so we have an assault rifle uh, for CQC combat. Um, we have the auto pistol, um, which freezes the targets on critical hits. Uh, we have the deliverer, which improved VAT's hit chance, 25% less action point cost. Um, Let's see, we have Dr. Doom here. This is my stopping power weapon. This is my backup in case all hell breaks loose. Um, bullets explode on impact doing 15 points area of effect damage. Uh, so this is definitely the fallback weapon. Um, so you guys can see um, everything that I have on me here. Uh, these are going to be my weapons that I'm using. Um, so let's take a look at my uh, carry weight. So you can see um, I can carry 405 pounds and I am at 308. So I can roughly carry about uh, 92 um, pounds of gear. I have 92 uh, pounds of gear that I can carry. Um, so that's pretty good. So as long as you're lighter um, than your carry weight, you're good. Um, and with the weapon selection that we have here, uh, that's basically where you want to be in terms of uh, stealth ability. Um, I'm not going to get into gameplay. Um, I'll do that uh, a different time. This is basically showing you how you want to set up your character for... Um, <clears throat> stealth runs so uh, again you guys just check the video out um, look at everything that you've se that you've seen uh, if you want to set yours up like that fine if you want to check it out see if it works all well and good um, it's just basically designed to show you how to more effectively um, you know wander out in the wasteland uh, with minimal resistance um, especially if you're doing stealth or you're getting into stealth or not really comfortable with it uh, this will help you out um, thank you to anyone that may watch the video uh, I do appreciate it um, and uh, enjoy